Welcome to the ML Dropout. My name is David, and in this video we are talking about how to make a control chart. To anyone who hasn't heard of a control chart, control charts are statistical tools used to detect anomalies, and they are commonly used in manufacturing plants um, and, and chemical plants and, and you know any kind of place where you're, you're dealing with uh, production. Um, one thing to note as well before we get too deep into this, if you are familiar with some machine learning techniques, you may have heard of autoencoders. Autoencoders are commonly used for anomaly detection. Um, and it's really important that we note that in some cases, control charts actually outperform autoencoders. So if you didn't know that, you know, I would definitely suggest you take some time to look into that. Um, and in my experience, I've encountered several engineers who you know, their first instinct is, I want to solve a problem using machine learning. And in many cases, there's already a way to solve that problem that's much simpler, such as maybe a control chart or like maybe in discrete optimization, it could be something as simple as like a linear program. Um, so just to note that, you know, if you've heard of autoencoders, but you haven't heard of control charts, I strongly recommend you become familiar with them. Um, and they can serve as a great baseline to uh, test your, your autoencoder performance. So now that that's slid, let's just get into this. So control charts here, I just have, you know, I'm setting up my file path. Um, this, you know, it's important for anyone who is new to Python um, to understand what I'm doing here. So I have a directory um, and in my directory, I'm not gonna look at it, but in my directory, I have uh, a folder called figures and I have another folder called data. And so this is me backing out of the figures and then um, when I go to load the data, I you know load my data from data, but I'm just I'm just setting my file path. Here are my import statements. So I import pandas, statistics, copy, blah blah blah. Right. Um, here we go ahead and we load the data. So you can see this is some manufacturing data. This is some data that I uh, generated in one of my college courses a while back. So back when I was in my undergrad program, we had to develop control charts for this. Um, toy data of a mouse factory and we have to analyze it and then we have to kind of say okay what are the leading causes of these mouses being defective you know how can we improve this manufacturing process so this data comes from that we have five different um, data points that we collect in like what would be one sample and then we have the average of those and then we have the range okay so now we're going to get into some of the calculations. So here we have control chart constants. I have a link below in this video to where you would find these constants and how you come up with them. Um, I'm not going to explain them right now, but if you're interested in control charts and you're not, uh, you haven't used them in the past, I would strongly suggest you, you learn about the different formulas and, and especially these constants. After that, we go into calculating the R bar. So this is just the average of the range. R bar is the, you know, the average of the range. So then we have the UCL, this is your upper control limit. This is going to be our R bar times this D4 constant. Our lower control limit is again, kind of the same thing, R bar times this D3 constant, it's zero. So always the lower control limit here is gonna be zero. Again, these constants are based upon our data. Um, and, and I had to determine these uh, looking at the table, but, but I'll let you do that in your own time. Uh, getting further on, what we're going to do is make a deep copy of our data frame. Now, the reason why I'm doing a deep copy versus copy is recently I found in Python that when I copy my data frames, for some reason, they still point back to the original data frame. This gets into memory issues. Um, if you're not familiar with dealing with memory in any kind of programming, um, this might be a weakness for you. Uh, but essentially, this deep copy ensures that when I'm making changes to the, this new data frame, it is not making adjustments to the original data frame. Ultimately, it doesn't matter for what we're doing here, but I figured I would explain that. So then we're going, we're inserting. So I'm taking my data frame and I'm inserting these three columns uh, based upon the data that we just calculated and I'm telling them the index locations, right? So here we have, uh, you know, what were our original columns and now we are adding in the R bar, the R UCL and the R LCL. And it just ex gets placed between this X bar and this R. Okay, and now we're looking at the head. So, you know, we see the data frame again. Now we're gonna get into the charts. So I put these inside of functions. If you are interested in these functions, um, I have currently not put my code on GitHub. It is, it is all on YouTube. So I'll just leave the screen here for a couple of seconds. So you can, you can look at it if you want to, you know, replicate this code. 
Um, I'm a big believer in typing things out. So even if I did have it on GitHub, you know, the idea that you could just go in there and copy paste it, um, it's not very intriguing to me because it, it defeats the learning process, I believe, you know, at least in this scenario. So here's the code or the function to create this control chart using matplotlib. In this video, we are using two different plotting libraries. We're using matplotlib and we're using plotly. Um, matplotlib, to get into a little bit of explanation here, matplotlib is a lot more commonly used in exploratory data analysis. So if you are a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, you're constantly working in a Jupyter notebook, you're probably going to be using matplotlib a lot. Um, that being said, if you are doing a web application, you're probably going to be using Plotly because Plotly, if we get down here, um, it's interactive, right? Matplotlib is not interactive, it's static. And then with matplotlib, when you want to display that back to the user, a lot of times you have to generate the image, save the image, then host that image in your website. Whereas with Dash, you can just uh, host this, this graph by itself. So now that we've explained a little bit of the difference between matplotlib and plotly and their use cases, again, here's the function. So we're taking in our data, we're taking in, uh, these are names. So main is going to be the name of our main variable. Then we have our UCL, our LCL, so upper control limit, lower control limit, whatever the, the median is going to be. Um, so this median would be like X bar or it would be R bar. We have the title for the graph, then we have the title for your X axis and the title for your Y axis. So again, this is matplotlib. So we're gonna do plt.figure because I imported matplotlib as plt. So now we've gener started to generate our figure and I'm going to go ahead and um, add some plots to it. So every time I do this plt.plot, I'm having it plot some kind of data. So here, the data that it's plotting is this r main. So again, this main as we see here is just r. So I'm taking all of the values in this, this last column, the r column, and we're plotting those with O markers, there's still gonna be lines, but they have a marker now as well. Then we're gonna do the same thing without the marker for our upper control limit, our lower control limit, and our median, which are specified here when I call this function. And then we're going to plot the legend. If I didn't have this, no legends would be plotted. We're going to plot a grid. If I didn't have this, there would be no grid. And then we're going to add our titles, um, being like the plot title, our x-axis label, our y-axis label, and we return the fig. Um, after we do that, we call this and you see the fig here. One thing to note is if I then go and I do something like fig.show, um, I did not type that right. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oops, yes. This is why I hate live coding. See, I almost missed that period again. Um, it's gonna tell you that it's not using the right um, backend so, you know, this is an issue here, but it really doesn't matter if you're just using Jupyter Notebook to explore data, it's fine. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I just wanted to show you that. So we have this figure suite, it looks like a control chart. We can see that, you know, for the most part, all of our data is uh, within control. Um, in control chart theory, there are some things that you would wanna look for, such as um, points trending in the same direction or three points that are like above the line consecutively, things like that. Um, you can read about those uh, online, but you know, there's a few different rules that you wanna look for. Um, for the most part, this looks fine. There could be a little bit of an issue here, right? But uh, you know, it depends on what rules we're using. But again, I'm not gonna explain that. Um, but here the graph is, it looks nice. Now we're gonna go look at the Plotly one. So here we have the same uh, input star function, you know, differences underscore go versus up here we have underscore PLT. Um, but otherwise, like our, you know, our first line of our function is the same. We go ahead, we initialize the figure. Um, with Plotly, you do this fig.addTrace. So where in matplotlib, you do this dot plot. In Plotly, we're doing this dot add trace. And then we're doing uh, go dot scatter. So graphing objects dot scatter. This is if we want to do a scatter plot or even if a scatter plot that's connected by lines. So here in the mode, we can specify markers, which will make it like a dot plot. We can do lines, which makes it a line plot, or we can do lines plus markers which will give us something like what we had up here when we did this marker O, right? So we see this line and the dots on the same data point. So we're doing that for the four data points, you know, the same that we're seeing up there. Then we're going to update our layout. So we're giving it a title. We're giving a title to our legend. Then we're updating our X and Y axis title and we are returning this figure. <clears throat> After we do that, we make a function call to set this fig underscore go to 
uh, basically be the graph based upon the exact same uh, data you know that we input here we're inputting into this function and then with plotly you do have to do this fig dot show if you want to see it if i took this away um, and i ran this you would see nothing so you know that's just one difference as well if you're just working in jupyter notebook if you're working in dash it doesn't matter you're never going to use this fig dot show but i did want to show that um, but if we get into the control chart you know here we have the same lines they're colored differently if you want to learn how to color things, there's definitely some uh, information online and I might make videos about that in the future. Um, but for now, I just wanted to show you that we have, you know, here we have a control chart uh, for what is an R bar chart using Plotly. And here we have one using matplotlib. And if we were to change our inputs such that we wanted to make an X bar chart instead of a R bar chart, or we want to do an X bar bar chart, so that is the mean of your mean, um, we could do that as well using this exact same function. We would just change our inputs, right? So that's the beautiful thing about the function for these graphs. And, you know, to take the second note on here, um, this plot can now be implemented into a Dash application, which is something I will do in a future video. Um, that's all I had for you guys today. I just wanted to show you how to make a uh, control chart both in Plotly and in Matplotlib. Thank you.